So this is our very first, um, this is our first red band video. And red band is our reading time. And this is when we would read and respond to things in our, um, in our OCR, our reading books. So red band is a time our, our ELA program is broken up into three bands like I talked about earlier. Green band is in the morning with the phonics stuff. That's when we would talk about letter names, letter sounds, rhyming, all that fun stuff. Red band is when we get to read stories and respond to them. So we talk about vocabulary words, we talk about comprehension strategies, and so we do all that stuff. And then, oh, I'm sorry, blue band is writing. So that's our writing concepts and our grammar concepts. Red band though, what we're gonna do right now is reading and responding. And so we talk about different comprehension strategies. A comprehension strategy is a way to help us understand what we're reading a little bit better. And we also introduce some vocabulary words. Vocabulary is a big word for just a new word, a word that you don't really know yet one that you, you want to learn and you want to know what it means. So when you're reading and you come to a word and you think, huh, what is that? That could be a vocabulary word where you learn more about it and you learn the definition of it. We're going to go into our Pickled Peppers book. Pickled Peppers, that's the title of our, of our book. And this is the front cover of our book. Usually on the front cover, it has a title. Sometimes it will have an author and an illustrator, the name of the person who writes the words and who draws the pictures. And it usually has a picture of some sort. So here's a drawing of a little mouse running through. It looks like he's running through a town. And this is our title. Our title is big at the top because that's what the book is called. Now in our Pickled Peppers book, there's a lot of different authors and illustrators. So there isn't one listed on the cover. This would be our title page. So it says pickled peppers again. Let's flip to the next page. Here's one more page. And we come to our table of contents. A table of contents is a very important part of a book. And we kind of looked at this earlier during Green Band. I showed you this and I talked to you about it as well. But we'll talk about it again really quick. Pickled Peppers is the name of our book and this is the Table of Contents. The Table of Contents has all of the stories inside of our book and the page numbers to find them. So if I didn't want, if I was looking for a specific story or a specific rhyme and I didn't want to just search the entire book, I would go here and find the page it was on and that would help me figure out an easier way to get to that. So in Pickled Peppers, Pickled Peppers has all of our nursery rhymes and nursery rhymes are rhymes that you might know from maybe like daycare or maybe your mom or dad have, have taught you some rhymes. So you might know some of these and I, I kind of hope you do know some of them so that you can say them with me. You can sing them along with me. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to the mulberry bush and the mulberry bush is down here. That's the name of the rhyme we're gonna, we're gonna read. And the mulberry bush, if we follow the dotted line, it's on page 14, one four. So we're gonna flip all the way over to the mulberry bush. And we did read that earlier. So we're just gonna read it one time. Here we go. This book is kind of old, so some of the pages um, are falling apart, but it's okay because even though books are old, they're still good, right? Yeah. So here it is, the mulberry bush. This is illustrated by Jack Ross. Now, nursery rhymes are usually so old that people don't really know who the original author is, who the person who wrote the words first is. So they don't really say an author when it is a nursery rhyme. So instead of an author, we have an illustrator because this is a picture that somebody named Jack drew. So, so the illustrator draws the pictures. So here we go with our mulberry bush rhyme. I'm gonna read it one time with you. If you remember it, I want you to say it with me, okay? Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, so early Monday morning. So the mulberry bush, the kids are going around in a circle around that mulberry bush, right? We are going to 
going to introduce, now that we read it and we reviewed it a little bit, talked a little bit about it, we're going to introduce some vocabulary words that came from our rhyme the mulberry bush. Remember vocabulary, so up here I have pickled peppers vocabulary. So we're going to make a list of the words that we learn in pickled peppers. And remember vocabulary is just a long word. It's a big word to just describe a new word that you're learning that you don't necessarily know before. Our first vocabulary word, and we have two vocabulary words. Our first one is going to be mulberry bush. And our second word is going to be Monday. <clears throat> so a mulberry bush. Did you know what a mulberry bush was before you heard this poem and before we talked about it? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really know what a mulberry bush was either. I don't have a mulberry bush at my house, but I can tell that the mulberry bush is a type of plant, right? It's a type of bush and I have seen bushes before. I have bushes in my backyard, so I know what they look like. So a mulberry bush is just a type of bush. It's a type of a plant that grows in the ground. Now I know stuff about growing plants because I've, I've gardened with my mom before. We have a big garden at our house in my backyard, so I know how to grow plants. So that's the connection that I'm making to mulberry bush. I know that it is a plant and you can even see in the picture here, right? Monday is our next word. Can you say Monday? Monday is a day of the week. And during calendar, we talked a little bit. And if you don't know, um, if you don't know a day is of the week song, you're going to learn one. We're going to be singing one during calendar almost every single day. And you will learn that there are seven days in a week. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday are our weekend days, but the other five days are the days that we, that are during the school week. Monday is kind of the start to the week. So Monday is just a day of the week. We could replace the word Monday with another day of the week. So instead of saying so early Monday morning, we could say Tuesday instead of Monday. So the poem would be so early Tuesday morning. You could replace Monday with any other day of the week. So we know that Monday is a day of the week. Do you want to try that? Maybe we should read our poem again. And instead of Monday, let's say a different day of the week. How about we do that? Today is Tuesday, so how about we say Tuesday? So instead of Monday, we're going to say Tuesday. Ready? Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, so early Tuesday morning. <laughs> so that's kind of fun to make it different, right? We are going to read another poem another rhyme from our Pickled Peppers book today. So we're not just gonna stop at the mulberry bush. We're gonna go ahead and flip back to the table of contents because I'm gonna go to Mary Had a Little Lamb. Have you ever heard Mary Have a Little, Mary Had a Little Lamb? I think that a lot of friends will know this one, which is good. We're gonna go to page 16. So here we are at page 16, and this is Mary Had a Little Lamb. Remember, a lot of times there's not an author of a nursery rhyme because it's so old. Nobody remembers who was the first one to write it. But the illustrator is Thomas Kern, so he's the one that drew this picture on this page of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay, are you ready to read our poem? Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day. That was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. That was our Mary had a little lamb. It's Mary, this version of Mary had a little lamb might be a little bit different than the one that you know. Maybe you know one that's kind of like a song, right? So this rhyme is a little bit different. 
I'm gonna say it again, and if you want, join me this time, okay? If you can, join me in saying it. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, that was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. I was noticing when I read that the second time, I noticed that there's some words in there that rhyme. Snow and go rhyme because they have the same ending. You hear O oh at the end of snow and you hear O oh at the end of go, right? So snow and go rhyme. I wonder if there's another word that rhymes with snow and go. Can you think of one? Hmm. Snow, go, what do you think? Toe, did anyone say toe? What about no? Those are great words and they all rhyme because they all end in O, oh, the same sound. Nice job, friends. There are, there are a couple more words in, the, in this next stanza, the last stanza that rhyme as well. Day and play rhyme because they both end in A. D, A, pl, A, day, play. What's another word that rhymes? Hmm. Say, may, K. Those are great words. We are rhyming machines today, aren't we? There's a couple vocabulary words that I want to add to our pickled peppers vocabulary from this poem, okay? Let me get a new marker. Let's go with purple. And the first word I'm going to rhyme is fleece. I'm going to write, sorry. I am rhyming on my brain. The first word is fleece and the second word is rule. Fleece. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Do you know what fleece means? Fleece is kind of a hard one. Fleece is the outside covering of a sheep. So all of the fur that the sheep has on the outside, you know how sheep are really furry and white sometimes? Sometimes they can be black too. Um, that's the fleece of the sheep. You can cut the fleece off. Some farmers might shave their sheep and take the fleece and make stuff with it. So fleece is just the outside covering of the sheep. So that little sheep right there, that little lamb, is a baby sheep. Um, and rule, what about the word rule? Do you know what a rule is? Do you have rules at home? Maybe one of your rules at home could be like, don't stand on the table right? Oh my goodness. We would never stand on the table, right? That would just be silly. <laughs> a rule is something that tells people how to act or behave. So we have rules at school and we have rules at home too, right? Like I bet one of your rules at home is not to stand on the tables. That's definitely a rule at school. You are never going to see Miss P standing on a table and you wouldn't be standing on a table either because that's dangerous. So a rule tells you how to act or behave. Sometimes we have sometimes we have rules during school, like during certain times of the day, when we are doing something at the carpet and you're listening, you might have to be quiet. Because if you're talking, then that would be against the rules. Sometimes it's time to talk and play, but there's different rules for the playground. There's different rules when you go to the cafeteria and eat lunch. There's rules for snacks. There's, there's lots of rules in school and probably at home too. I want you to think maybe you have a special rule at home that maybe you don't like all the rules at home. Maybe you think I would really like to stand on a table, but you know that would not be allowed, right? So sometimes we like the rules and sometimes we don't, but we have them to help us learn how to act or behave. So that is a rule. All right, my friends. Well, thanks for re thanks for listening to my nursery rhymes with me. And we learned all of these new vocabulary words. That's a lot, isn't it? Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.